Um, I'm doing a pretty good job explaining the story. Yeah. Like my mouth is uh, <laughs> salivating right now, and my hat is about to slip off my head with sweat. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself. It's more impressive than the helmet catch. Hey everyone, I'm Lindsay Bettis, Miss Florida, your host of Hot Shots. We are here in downtown Sanford at the Spice is Nice, and I'm joined by two very special guests, James Brown and Barry Cofield, and we're gonna get things heated up. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. They don't know what they signed up for, and honestly, <laughs> I don't know how we keep getting willing participants for this show, so you're in for it. Let's go ahead and grab our first little spoons. It's, it's very misleading because they have little happy faces on them, and I don't know how long you'll be happy for, but we'll construct our little spoon here. And as Miss Florida, the pageant girl that I am, I always like my first two questions to be random interview questions that I've been asked. So let's pour our first sauce. Our first sauce is Big Reds and it is a green chili avocado sauce. It has this nice little Fiesta avocado man. He does look a little sinister, but seeing that it's the first one on here, it can't be that harmful, hopefully. A lot of times I'm wrong. So get yourself a nice little plentiful doll up there. That's pretty hot. Pass it all around to all your friends. Does it have to be so much? <laughs> we'll see. Here. Four. It only goes downhill from here, guys. Hmm. Good enough. Okay, so yes, perfect. Before we get started with our first question, I have to ask. If you could be any, and I'm I'm targeting and tailoring this question to your specific line of work. So normally I'd ask if you were any kitchen appliance, what would you be and why? Because that's what I was asked when I was 10 years old on stage, because fair question, right? Um, so what gym appliance or workout equipment would you be and why? Uh, I, would, I would say bench, just because it supports a lot of, a lot of activities, so. I'll All right. I would be the, uh, uh, the air bike. The air bike. So people hate it. Yeah. But, you know, it's very, very useful, um, very, very intense, and um, it's one of my favorite pieces of equipment. All right, cheers to that. The bench and the air bike. <laughs> I think that one's delicious. Yeah, it's tasty. I think that this might be like the most beginner friendly sauce <laughs> I've ever tried in this store. This is a setup. But the rest won't be like that, I promise. Yeah, I know. I'm leery. So happy first sauce to us. My, now that my other random pageant question. If you could be anyone's pet on this entire planet, whose pet would you be and why? Does it have to be a real pet or can I just in install myself as a pet? So you can either tell me what pet you would be, but whose pet would you be? Like I would be Beyonce's like cat. Okay. I feel like I'd live a very glamorous kitty cat life. I want to be Shaq's parrot. I feel like that would be a time. Shaq's parrot. I'm sitting up high, perched above. He lives a fancy, luxurious life, and he's a funny guy. So if I can repeat what he's saying, I think I get some. Oh my laughs. gosh, I love that. That's the easy one. I'd be the president's dog, for sure. That would be so fun. Just yeah. running around the White House, passing legislation. I'm just kidding. Does, <laughs> does half the country dislike you, though? Right. That's polarizing. You'd be a pol very polarizing <laughs> pet. All right. Well, once again, thanks so much for being on here with me today. Um, I want to know, like, how did we get to this point in our life? I know that you were a former NFL player, and now you're both working at D1 Fitness, so in training. So tell me about what in your life caused you to get here. Uh, honestly, we've known each other for many, for decades now. Yeah. We're getting old. We're <laughs> uh, dating ourselves. Um, we grew up in the same church back home in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. Um, and actually both just moved down here at different times. Uh, I was, uh, I retired down here after finishing up uh, 10 years in the NFL. And um, I thought there would be no better person to help me on my, uh, on my journey um, after opening D1 than uh, being able to invite somebody that I, that I knew, trusted and loved and felt like I could, uh, you know, turn my back and know that things are gonna be okay at the business. And so it was the best decision I ever made. That's awesome. Yeah, same, just, um, just the opportunity to serve. Uh, we've partnered together on other opportunities, you know, whether it's youth initiatives, education initi initiatives, and um, when he, you know, proposed this opportunity, definitely was an opportunity to serve and, and, you know, get entrenched in the community. I love that. So the two of you have known each other for a while. Is there like a funny story of how you all met or just been friends forever growing up in the same area, you said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We or do you all have any, what's we, the funniest story that you time, that the time that you've had together? Oh man, 
it's got, it's, what's the rating on this? Does it have to be appropriate? Family be, friendly. Family friendly stories. I rub my tongue on my teeth. Yeah, funny, funny family friendly stories. Uh, how about just how funny it is to be a Cleveland fan, Cleveland sports fan. We've had so many ups and downs rooting. You know, I played in the NFL, but now I'm back to rooting for my miserable old Browns. Um, Cleveland Cavs friends, we went to the, uh, the parade together yeah. after That's they awesome. after they won that parade and um, you know Guardians now we're the Guardians Cleveland Guardians fans wow. so just a lot of uh, funny texts and ups and downs and tears shed over our hometown team. Well, I grew up a Jacksonville Jaguar, so mm, so you get it. I get it. <laughs> you get it. All right. Well, let's try sauce number two. This is something a little bit different than I've tried. So this is the Hob Spicy Sweet Soy Sauce. Has this little fun little dragon on it. Let's see if he's actually fun. So it's spicy sweet. Spicy sweet. Oh, so there's some hope for us. Optimistic. <laughs> optimistic. Yes. <laughs> Happy Fourth. It smells friendly. What are, what, are you, what are you getting hints of? I'm getting hints of my tongue's about to be just <laughs> on fire. All right, here we go. Mmm. It's tasty. It's very tasty. Mm. Got a little bit of However, after bite. That was quite the step up from the first one. Yeah. yeah. We went from like a one to a 10 real quick. Yeah. So I did a little bit of my homework. You know, I'm not the most well-versed in football, but I saw that you have a very special celebration. <laughs> so <laughs> tell us about how that started. The, well, that the taser spicy. dance. That is a spicy topic <laughs> well, as you mentioned it. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's like I didn't play in the NFL. All I did was dance. Cause that's all. I, any kid, anybody asked me about is that celebration. Um, funny enough, it's actually connected to the state of Florida. Before I had any connection to the state of Florida, it was a kid at a who was, I guess, protesting a speech um, at the University of Florida. Kind of was interrupting, and the security kind of warned him to, to relax. <laughs> he wouldn't relax, and then they threatened to tase him, and he just screamed out, "Don't tase me, bro!" And they, but they did not acquiesce. They did tase him. I found it funny. Um, and so was that made up on the spot or you were like, this is gonna be my dance oh, no, when no. my time this comes? This took hours of practice in the mirror. Um, me practicing exactly how to tase myself and where would I hold the taser <laughs> and how to react. And it, um, it's just lived on. It's just been a fan favorite ever since. I love that. He put a lot of time and research into this. It was not spontaneous. This was, this was well thought out. Absolutely. And I applaud that. Absolutely. So now that you're all here in Sanford, let's grab our next little, well, you all are in Sanford. We're in Sanford right now. The spice is nice, but being in Seminole County, what's your favorite like hidden gem here? Hmm. Besides D1? Yeah. <laughs> favorite hidden gem in Seminole. Uh, man. Favorite uh, restaurant. There's so many things. Favorite uh, activity. Honestly, I like so many, I mean, I got two two boys. Yeah. So many, Um. so I got a good one. So many, uh, sporting events and you got your post game sporting events so one of my favorite places that we go to is friendly confines okay um right there on 46a uh in that colonial area across from colonial town center they got a great uh little back grass area where we let the kids play and the parents all sit on the on the back patio and, and eat and watch games so that's one of my favorite little uh seminole county gyms love it you have one yeah, I'd say downtown Sanford for sure. Yeah. Um, there's always something going on down here and um, it's music, festive, you know, it's always lively, good food. Um, so I, I definitely. Yeah, um, it's I always like a good time down here. Yeah. So I love coming over towards downtown Sanford, being here at the Spice is nice. Every time that I get so kindly invited over here, <laughs> every time I get sent home with heartburn, but it's worth it, let me tell you that. All right, now this is where things take a turn. The hotter than L goes sauce. No, for the worse. <laughs> Things start to go downhill from here. All right. Oh. Oh yeah. You're hotter than L. All right. I like the house. I'll pass that over there. The house house. So that is made here in Sanford, and so that one was actually on the show Hot Ones, and this is rated a number four. I don't know if I believe that, but by someone who probably has a much higher spice tolerance than us. You didn't mention that there was a Grim Reaper. There's the Grim Reaper on it. So, you know, we go from the dancing avocado to the yeah. Grim Reaper. If that gives you a little. There's little chunks and everything. A little show of where we've been. All right, let's try it.
All right. <laughs> Thoughts? It's delicious. No, not bad. Not bad at all. It's delicious. Mm. Yeah. I will say, all these taste good. I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a sweet and sour texture, but not as sweet. Okay, while well, my brain recovers from that. <laughs> I also saw that you were in the game with the craziest ever helmet catch. Tell me about that. So the funnest, funniest thing about that is that from the sideline, you don't really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. We're just on the sideline. The referee says catch, and we're just like, yes, first down. You know, that's all we're thinking about. It's not until after the game, you get back to your hotel room and you watch ESPN and you realize that was the greatest catch ever. You know, it's, he had it stuck to his head. He's getting bent backwards. First of all, Eli, who is not very nimble, evades four or five guys at the line of scrimmage, chucks it about 30, 40 yards in the air. David Tyree, who had dropped every pass in practice all week, goes up to make uh, the catch of the lifetime. So. Um, I'm doing a pretty good job explaining this story. Yeah. My mouth is uh, <laughs> salivating right now, and my hat is about to slip off my head with sweat. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself. It's more impressive than the helmet catch. This is this is right the point now. where I love when you guys talk as long as you can, because then yeah. I have more time to yeah. recover. But so being on a football team, there must have been some crazy locker room moments. <sighs> Are there any family friendly locker room moments <sighs> that you'll just never forget? You know what? My guy, my guy, Michael Strahan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make fun of him a little bit because he had a it. moment, and it's funny because he's become like America's sweetheart, you know. But he did not have the greatest relationship with the media. So I just remember one moment, Stray's eating a breakfast sandwich, or maybe it was a ham sandwich. Ham hanging from his mouth while he's screaming back and forth with a reporter, mid sentence, mid lunch. Um, topless, we, we all gave him a really hard time about that. So that was one of the funnier stories I remember from the locker room. That's too funny. I'm sure there's there's no shortage of that. That's the thing I miss the most. People always ask me, I don't miss tackling anybody. I don't miss uh, necessarily even the, the, the crowds, uh, the game days, but I do miss the locker room, that camaraderie, hanging around a bunch of uh, like-minded, um, a little bit nutty people like yourself that's the, that's the most fun thing and that's I'm sure know. I'm sure well now that we've had like 30 seconds to recover <laughs> let's dive right into our next one and this one I'm actually very excited about I'm sure I won't be in a few moments but it's the high desert sauce company the tikka hot masala and this was also on the show hot ones and it's rated a six so I believe the scale goes to ten and the fact that this was a four what makes me a little nervous for this but this one you know it's like a desert on fire it doesn't look too intimidating except for the fact that it will probably take us to the burn ward all right y'all get yourself some of that let me smell it this smells delicious but i know it's about to be a whole nightmare we're going to test my waterproof mascara yeah, I was gonna say it's already started melting off i can feel it i can feel it sorry i gotta study first i don't trust your tear is not off to the side or anything. Like you're doing very well over there. It's my job. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's try that. It's delicious. That was good. A little bite at the end. Deliciously spicy. <laughs> that one is my favorite, like taste. Not the friendliest spice level. But that one, was, that one was very delicious. That was only a six out of ten. That was only a six out of ten. Mm. Mm. All right, so how'd you get into this profession? Into training, working with your best bud? Um, again, it was just uh, an opportunity to, to work with youth, uh, to work with the community, to work with um, really uh, people around the, the county that, that <laughs> that do that do so many cool things you know we're, we're very vi diverse in what we do you know not just um, you know training youth not just training adults we also have a physical therapy clinic in our facility um, we host the Special Olympics SST. That's amazing. SST, yeah. SST rehab um, we host the Special Olympics powerlifting meet so there's just a lot of different things that we get the opportunity to do yeah I I'm see that over I see that leak and that last one got me <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um no, it's just, it's fun. It's a, it's a good opportunity. Um, it's still in my wheelhouse of, of business, you know, making sure that the day-to-day -day is, is running smoothly. Um, That's amazing. But, but yeah, ooh, 
my tongue. I'm so shocked that it's like my tongue's kind of numb. Yeah, very I can hear the words coming out. I can feel. The I know. Out, but. That's how it always is. I come here with you know some really great questions in mind for you all, like really ready to dive in, and then my <laughs> my thoughts, my brain, my my <laughs> eyes, they're all empty after this. So I know you got a little skill for dance. Do you have any hidden talents? If we were to enter you in Mr. Seminole County, what would be your talent? Well, I was in a, a singing group called Vibe. Were you really? <laughs> yeah. Was it good? Excellent. <laughs> you know, we, we, were, we, we considered ourselves heart heartthrobs back then. I love it. And so like, what was like the type of music? Definitely R&B. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You serenade all the ladies? Yeah, in the cafeteria. Or wherever, wherever, wherever we needed to, to drop a few notes, we, we we did what we needed to do. So yeah. I love that so much. Yep. Is that AC working? <laughs> never, never. You know that's how it is when you eat hot sauce. You know you gotta you gotta just sweat it out. So, being a former NFL player, I'm sure that you have a lot of kids look up to you. What's like your best piece of advice to someone who you know wants to play pro football in the future? Um, just my biggest piece of advice that I give in general to kids is just to treat others better than you want to be treated. Right. Um, sounds real much, uh, you know, elementary, but I think it's a real sound, sound way to live. And then on the sports end, I always just talk to kids about some of the best athletes I ever played with or guys I play with in the, in the playground, mm -hmm. you know, on a schoolyard that never got a chance to, to make it to a football field, never got a chance to play organized sports because they didn't do the right things in their classroom, didn't do the right things by their parents, just didn't handle authority in the right way. So I always tell every kid I coach, you're not good enough to have an attitude. Right. Trust me, I've seen how good you gotta be to have an attitude and none of you guys are good enough. Keep your head on straight, do the right things in the classroom, good grades, great attitude, and then you have uh, so many opportunities ahead of you. That's great. You tell the same advice to your kids? Oh, absolutely. Just in life just, in general? Just with worse language, just with adult profane language. I tell them the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been like the biggest or hardest thing going from, you know, being a professional football player to now being a father and business professional? What has that looked like, that transition? Uh, it's, me and some of my old teammates, we joke about it. It's just like becoming back into regular civilization. You know, you're not yeah. in those locker rooms where you're able to say whatever you want, be a brute, can't hit people anymore. You know, the stuff that we do on the football field to go to jail if I did that. In the right. Show, so. um, definitely just uh, the, the, the biggest, the, the changes for the most part are, are for the better, I would say. It's good to wake up in the morning and not be in so much pain. The, the, the stress level goes down, you know, just being a part of society, being able to be a dad. My kids don't care anything about anything I did in the past. They don't think I was a good player. As a football coach, they think I'm an idiot. They don't trust me. I can coach any kid in America except for my own. So, and I, and I kind of treasure that. I kind of like that they just treat me like dad and, and that's an awesome feeling. Kids can be the worst. I remember that. And I mean that in the nicest way because I remember when I was a kid, I was the worst. My dad, you know, would tell me what he did in his past. He'd be like, well, I was voted most attractive. And I remember the first time he told me that, I was like, you're kidding. And he's like, no, look at me. He pulled up his photo. My dad's like, oh big red-headed man. I'm like, oh, you were so handsome. I love it. And now he's like, you, well, you get your looks from me. I'm like, all right, dad, all right. So I totally get that because I'm that little kid that was like, I ain't listening to this thing you say, dad. Yep. All right. Do we want to just go ahead and bite the bullet on this one? Let's do it. Raspberry Rush. And you'd think that this would be, you know, deliciously sweet, but it's a raspberry on fire. And let's see here. No this, is, this is the part where I always try to delay everything, but there's no details except for the ingredients. Mm. And surprisingly, the first ingredient is red raspberries. And, oh, oh but there's reaper peppers in it. I was like, all these sound like really sweet. It's red, red raspberry sugar, red wine vinegar, agave, orange peel, vanilla, maple, and reaper Sounds peppers. Sounds like a dessert, <laughs> almost. So, we're about to get rocked here. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna eat that whole spoonful. Yeah, that was quite the dollop. Were you a bartender at any point? Was not. <laughs> I'd be a very generous pour. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
I'm gonna have to give yeah. you some of mine. You're good, you're good. All right, <laughs> so tell me a little bit, I know that you all said you kind of give back with what you all do, you know, how do you all get into being able to give back to the community and what does that mean to you all? But first, take this. <laughs> and then tell me about all the wonderful charitable things you do for your community. Wow, my sinuses are so clear. The thing is, I didn't oh. take that right, and it, I <coughs> went straight back to, through the throat. Oh. <coughs> Definitely delayed with that, the way it hit. I saw someone sampling this earlier. They did not do so well. I think but you asked me something about my favorite Thanksgiving dish or something. <laughs> <laughs> favorite Thanksgiving dish, favorite charitable organization you all have worked with, okay. best thing that you've done for your community? Um, I mean, definitely the best part about the gym is the, is the, the footprint in the community. Um, 5Ks often, you find us at a lot of 5Ks. You find us partnering with uh, especially youth athletics. It's just a, something that holds a place in my heart. Um, if it wasn't for people donating their time, money, and effort. And to me as a kid, I never would have made it um, where I made it. Uh, catching rides to games with friends, with coaches, uh, the, the discounted rates to play in leagues. And, you know, so whenever it comes down to raising money for a local youth uh, uh, fees, um, we've done equipment drives, we've done toys for the holidays. What else have we done? We donated to Safe House, Kids House, just a little bit of everything. Um, I just feel that I was blessed, lucky, and fortunate to have everything uh, that I have. Um, I was bigger, faster, and stronger than kids when I was like 12. Yeah. I hadn't worked really that hard at that point. You know, it was a gift. So to, to pay, uh, pay that gift forward, to pass on um, things to the community, uh, the, the youth and people in need, is uh, there, there's no better feeling for me. Well, I love that. I love that you all use your platform, your business, to be able to help and give back. You know, based on the opportunities that you've had to be able to pour into the community and other children with big dreams means a lot. Being able to be sentimental while you've just taken a level 18,000 <laughs> hot sauce. How ready are you all to get out of here? I'm ha happy to be here. You're it happy to be here? So, yeah, I'm going to have to change my shirt. Incredible. My shirt's a little down. I think they're ready for five more hot sauces. <laughs> we got to have them on again as a repeat guest. <laughs> but for real, thank you all so much for joining me here today. It's been a pleasure to have you all and hear a little bit more about you and your stories. And we're looking forward to seeing you around in the community. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank all you. All right. Go home and drink some milk. <laughs> hey, guys. It's Dino here, owner of Spices Nice. You've seen them try these sauces. Come on down yourself. Give it a shot. Are you strong enough? Can you handle it? Won't know until you try it. How many times do you need to do this? <laughs> this is probably like my sixth or seventh. We're ready for your What's up, what's up? Fourth episode. Man, I was just watching James' neck. Yeah. Back <laughs> back. It's just starting to get, is it getting wet?